students, how's everybody doing today? Your piano teacher Tim here, back with another great live lesson. So hopefully, let me know if you can't hear me, although I am going to actually turn up the sound just a little bit here on the stream, just so I can hear right off the bat if everything is operational. Tonight we are talking, or I am sharing with you, some great sounding piano pieces that are um, easy on the easier side and fun to play. But um, let me just, you know, say hello to some people here. Let's see here. Okay, it looks like the, um, you can hear me okay. Let me know if you can't. Um, okay, it is streaming in 4K, really weird. Because last time, well, I won't explain why, I'm not gonna bog it down. I wanna kinda just get into the lesson here. How's everybody doing? So glad and happy to be back with you all again today. We're gonna have another terrific lesson, of course. And um, let's see here. Um, Nadia cannot hear, but I think everybody else is good to go. So um, now I can. Okay, great, great. Okay, perfect, because um, it always makes me wonder. Okay, um, do, do, do Brenda says good topic and need something fun today. I'm practicing scales. Yeah, and then uh, if you know, like after I go through the list, if you know of any pieces that I did not cover, feel free to share and I'll take a look at them um, during the section of the lesson that happens right after the meat of the lesson and then I'll give you like a little quiz. Um, we have a new kind of format going into the new year, which you may have noticed, but it's still the tried and true lesson that you all love. Okay, um, let me, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, feel free to say hello coming in here to the chat. And uh, while you're doing that, I am going to start the Facebook stream. It should take less than a minute or so. So let me just get to it and I'll be right with you. Hello students, welcome out to our classroom piano lessons on the web. It's your piano teacher, Tim, back here again, or if it's your first time here, you know, introducing myself. Um, okay, if you're watching on Facebook, make sure to like our page. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, turn on all notifications so that you get notified when I we have new lessons coming out, which is pretty much all the time. But off the top of my head, you can expect new lessons uh, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Tuesday morning, my time, by the way. That's 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then uh, we have live classes on Friday and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But if you can't attend those, of course, the recording will be provided to you. Tonight we're talking about great sounding piano pieces that are fun and on the easier side to play. They might not be for the very beginner. Um, but there's something you can certainly work up to within uh, the first few months of learning how to play. All right, so hopefully everybody is ready to go. And uh, let me just kind of get some something up here, my notes here. Um, I'm going to do the intro, and then we'll get right on to it, or the lesson intro, rather. Okay. Here we go. Sorry, a car was driving by. I didn't, I didn't want to start then. What up, piano fam? Your piano teacher, Tim, here again. And I am going to show you some great sounding piano pieces bleh, that are fun and <clears throat> great to play. Let me try that again because... Uh, all right. What up, piano fam? Your piano teacher, Tim, here. And today I'm going to show you some awesome, great sounding pieces to learn that are fun and on the easier side to play. So let me show you the first one. First piece.
Okay, let me bring up the piece here so I can show you, so you all know what we're talking about. Okay, great. By the way, I have included these in the link in the description. Sorry, I have to log in here. Oh, are you kidding me? They're seriously going to make me do this. Um, all right, hold on. Hold your horses. All right, we're just going to do it like that. That works perfect. Okay. Great. Okay, the first piece is Canon in D, and I really love this one for people that are more on the beginner side. Um, one, it's in an easier key signature, two sharps, F and C. But the great thing about it is you have this repeated bass line that repeats over and over and over and over and over throughout the piece. And basically what's happening is each time that bass line starts over, um, this guy... Every time it starts over, it gets more and more slightly complex with your right hand. Let me get the piano here, because that's what kind of lesson we're talking about here. So, um, and then when it comes in again, so you're adding in some left hand notes, but it, or right hand notes, but it's pretty simple. And then as you can see, when it comes in yet again, it's the same bass line, but you're adding in chords now. Just like that and then as you can see it gets more and more complex each line that goes in and that's great for beginners because what that does is that introduces you to that opening bass line and you get used to playing that and um, so you get really accustomed to that and each time it just layers on something new so you're just much more prepared to play the next line that's just a little bit more complex than the last rather than just jumping from something that's easier to something that's really really hard and difficult right away um, that you know might throw you off so great choice for beginners canon and d by taco bell i mean paco bell i seriously thought it was taco bell the first time i heard it next piece all right piece number two let me show you all right uh you know what i'm going to do real quick I want to check in with the chat real quick just to make sure everything's working well. And uh, anybody that's coming in um, just now, I will get to your comments here towards the end. I like to get into the lesson a bit before we do that so we're not uh, jumping back and forth too much. Okay. Let me get the next score open. I have it right here. Okay, great. Next piece is Fur Elise. Hey, that kind of rhymes. Um, this one is a classic. Now, here's the thing about it. And uh, somebody gave me a little criticism when I was talking about Fur Elise before, saying that Fur Elise isn't really for beginners. And that's true. Um, the Past the first part that I'm going to show you just now, uh, it does get difficult pretty quick, and that isn't recommended so much for beginners, especially getting it up to speed. And everything else but this first part I find that a lot of students can handle I've had 10 year olds be able to play the opening to this piece now they were pretty good but um, it's it's really not that bad and it looks more complicated than it really is the great thing about it let me get the piano here again the great thing about it is that it's very repetitive so you have the opening melody that everybody recognizes and then you repeat it again and it just changes a little bit there at the end and then of course you have a, like a little additional section here this part's not too bad either the left hand same thing it's really the same thing a e a e e g sharp a a e a a e a a e g sharp so that makes it so much easier to do now putting your hands together can be a little tricky at first of course i play this tons and tons of time so i'm really can play it nice and smooth 
The second part is the same kind of thing. It's just different patterns, but they do repeat over and over again. It's really nothing too, too bad. Then it comes back to that first section again. So that makes it super, super manageable. If you want to learn this one, learn up to, let me get this whole sheet in here. Um, start from the beginning, learn through almost four lines down uh, to where you get to this first repeat here. Learn there because after that, that's the part that uh, gives students a lot of trouble. There's a lot more complex rhythms grace notes, things like that going on. So it definitely gets quite a bit more complicated after that. Okay, next piece. All right, let me bring this one up. If you know where that clapping's from, let me know, because that's actually a reference to my favorite YouTuber of all time. Uh, all right. Yeah, everybody's favorite coming up. All right. Oops. Let's bring that in here. Okay, the Prelude in C from the Well-Tempered Clavier Book 1. This is by Johann Sebastian Bach. And if you're getting new into playing Bach, I recommend you start with this one first. Again, the great thing about it is it's repetitive. It's simplistic. And that's pretty much what you want to look for when you are doing these pieces because it's kind of the same thing over and over again except it changes notes a little bit from measure to measure. See, like even this one, you're just changing just slightly there. But it's the same repeated rhythm over and over again. And one of the other reasons is I love to have beginner students do this one, or on the beginner side rather, is that the whole value of this piece or the whole complexity and what makes it musical and what makes it sound good is the notes are easy. But what is difficult or more on the difficult side that makes the piece, in my opinion, is the differences in dynamics and adding in those dynamics because you can really make it sound good if you add in the dynamics. It gives it so much more flavor. And it's just, it's such a nice piece. It's really easy to learn. It's really a highly recommended one. I know I talk about it and show you guys this one all the time, but if you're new to the channel, um, you need to grab this one. Again, where is the link? It is in the description. Just, just for you. Yes, you. All right. Next piece. All right. We're getting into some really good stuff here, everybody. Um, all right, I'm going to bring this up. What I'm going to do, just because I want to make sure everything is running smoothly in the live stream, I'm going to check in with the chat really quick. <laughs> and... Andy gets it. Andy gets it. All right. Uh, let's see here. I will answer, like I said, I'll answer some questions here in a little bit. I'm just making sure there aren't any comments like I can't hear you and uh, everything is wrong. So let's see here, everybody. Uh, we got 53 people here right now. That is fantastic. I love it. Um, all right. Back to the lesson because I know that's what you're all here for. Okay. Um, ba, 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 I'm loving it. Here we go. All right. Okay, this piece, the prelude in E minor, opus 28, number four, just rolls right off the tongue. Um, so just know it as the prelude in E minor by Chopin, or Chopin, or Chopin. Don't say Chopin, though. People will get mad at you. Okay, this one. What's great about this one is, first of all, Chopin pieces are notoriously difficult, or at least moderately to extremely difficult. 
The great thing about it is if you want to get into playing Chopin, which has a really nice lyrical kind of sound to it, really, it's from the um, Romantic era, so it has just, like I said, that very lyrical sound. It's really cool, really different compared to Bach. Um, this is the piece you want to start out with, and there's a lot of reasons why. One of the reasons why is, again, you have these repeated patterns in the left hand, where the chords are just changing by a little bit. So it's really easier to get the hang of. And then the right hand is really simple. There's a lot of longer notes, dotted half notes, quarter notes, things like that. This one, again, is all about the dynamics and the phrases, meaning that you're going to be connecting the notes between these slurs here. So I'm just going to play the opening line here. You've probably all heard this one before. so forth. I'm not going to play the whole thing because the whole point of this lesson is just to kind of show you what these are all about and the ones I recommend. The Me showing you exactly how to play it would be a whole different beast by itself. Okay, um, and then this one, let me just kind of look through it some more, see if I can give you any more hints. It never really gets really that complicated. You have some things going on. <coughs> Oops. Uh... You have some triplets and things, but nothing ever really crazy. So highly recommended for this one. It's also a classic. You've probably heard it in movies and all around. Next piece. Okay, let me bring up the next piece. And we'll go from there. This one was actually, well, I'll, I'll introduce it here in a second. Okay, this one was actually recommended by our student Andy in the last live stream, and I took a look at it. I had played it or part of it before. I was kind of scratching my head as to what it sounded like and what it was like, and I agree with him that this one is really great for beginners on the beginner side. There's a little bit more going on here. You can see with the, the keys, the time signature especially, I feel like is needlessly complicated. Um, it's really 4-4 four, four without bar lines is the way I would think about it. So as long as you're counting each note value, you're probably good to go. Um, but it's it's kind of confusing the way it's written. And I'm sure there's some reason behind it. Um, if somebody lit, could let me know in the chat why that is, I would love that because I love sharing knowledge. I actually learn stuff from these videos from you guys in the comments as well. Um, so not good not see. Naciene, hopefully I pronounced it right. Uh, some people might grill me over it, but that's okay. By Eric Sate. Hopefully I got that right too. Uh, all right, so let's take here. It's not my problem. I don't, uh, you know, I don't know every language and uh, every how to pronounce everything. Okay, so here we go. Um, this one. What's great about this one is it looks complicated, right? But your left hand again, seriously, doesn't have a whole lot going on. It really has the same pattern over and over again. As you can see, that's a pattern in what we look for, uh, repetition and simplicity in, in these pieces. So um, I'm just gonna play like maybe the opening line or two for you, so you kind of get a feel for what it sounds like. Oh, the reason I really wanted to add this one in too is it has a different sound to it than um, you know the Bach or even the Chopin. So I wanted to add something with a little bit different flavor to it. So here we go. so forth so it's actually a really really interesting kind of piece again where can you find the link to it in that description okay if you're liking the lesson so far make sure to smash that like button and leave a comment if you can or if you have something interesting to say 
because that really, really helps me out. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm, and it just lets other people know also that this is a quality lesson then they, that they can learn from as well. All right, we're going to get into quiz time here where I'm going to ask you some important questions about what we learned today. All right, let me check in with the chat real quick. Like I said, I'd like to make sure everything is going well. Okay, ba -ba -ba. all right, looks like everybody. The piece was supposed to flow, so bar lines were out. Oh, Andy has a really good explanation for that. That makes the uh, you know a lot a lot of sense. Okay, um, here we go. Let me. There's more to this, so let me get to that. Um, one thing I want to check on real quick. Just give me a second, guys and gals. Um, I'm going to check in because I did ask you. Um, it was kind of a last minute thing. I did ask you on the channel if you had any recommendations of easier pieces and actually now would be the time if you have something in the mind because we've covered all the pieces there's still a little bit more to the lesson for sure let me know any of your recommendations and i'll look them up and see if um, they're good to recommend for the lesson and i'll include them when i piece together the edited portion of the lesson so uh, let me know in the chat now would be the perfect time all right, let me go to the community tab here. Let me see if anybody commented. And no, unfortunately, but that's okay. Like I said, it was kind of a last minute thing. So I'm just gonna kind of take a look here at the um, at the chat here. I just saw Adrius. Adrius says your shelf changed colors. It's green. And the remote. Where did I put that? Oh, here it is. I have a remote right for this thing. Uh, what can you see here? And I have a ton of colors I can do on it. And so each time I think I'm going to do a slightly different color. Some of the colors, unfortunately, don't show up well on camera. One of them shows up just as white, which is really, really weird. I don't know what the deal is with that. But I will play with this later. At some, at some point, either at the end of today's lesson, I'll show you all the colors it can do. And then it has, like, different effects it can do that I think I'm not going to use for the most part because I feel like they're going to be uh, distracting. I kind of just wanted a solid thing rather than it blinking all all kinds of stuff. All right. All righty. Let me see if I got any recommendations in here. Great lesson tonight, says Terry. Thank you very much, Terry. I think you're on the newer side to our classroom, so thank you so much for coming out. I love, I love that you're here. And uh, let's see, you make piano playing seem so easy. Thank you so much, baby. I really appreciate that. Oh, Rich came in. Rich is back, everybody. Arabesque by Bergmuller, who he he had played this piece. Um, yeah, so let me, on his channel, let me get that up. Let me see if I can find that. I'm sure I can. It will not be super hard. See if I can spell it, but thank goodness for Google, right? And hopefully I can play it well enough to show you what it's like. I'm sure I can. As I remember, it's not that bad. And I have played it before. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right, we got it already. Let me bring it up on screen make sure you guys can see it and make sure everything's good on it all right cool okay i'm going to show you a recommendation from our student rich in the live stream all right he recommends arabesque by berg mueller now this one is a really good choice because again what what are some of the the key aspects about it that make it good for on the easier side that's manageable. Well, it's repetitive in the re left hand, right? And by repetitive, I mean in, in a, a good way. And all music, in a, by the way, is repetitive in some nature. Um, all right. So let me show you what this one's all about. And then the right hand, too, has these like little scale, uh, scale portion patterns. And it is in the key of A minor, meaning no sharps, no flats. Thank you goodness right all right 
So let me get this. I'm going to just play the opening two lines for you just to kind of show you what it's about. Ooh, I missed that last chord there, but that's okay. So you get the idea. It's really not that bad. Um, the cool thing about it actually as well is that um, let me bring up the whole thing so you can see what I'm, I'm seeing. You, uh, the cool thing about it is in the second section. It kind of switches hands to where um, a lot of the activity before was in the right hand in the melody. And then now there's actually kind of a double melody, a, mounter, a melody and a counter melody going on. Uh, but there's little scale patterns now in the left hand. So it's a really, really neat piece. It's really good practice too. Um, like I said, practicing in between both hands. And then you return to the opening portion of the piece again. By the way, sometimes it's something I haven't really talked about a whole lot on the channel is how songs are structured. Songs, now there's a lot of different ways, but if the most common, one of the most common forms is ternary, which is they have section A, which is the opening here. And then it changes. There's usually like a section B here. Um, and then it will often return to section A again. So just a little bit of factoids there for you. Okay, let's take a look if we have any more suggestions. The Pink Panther theme. That's interesting. Maybe I'll take a look at that. That one might be harder to find though because it's um, probably copyright. These are the Wahoo pieces you're giving us now, Tim. Thanks. All right. Glad to hear it. From Fanny. What about a Sonatina from Clementi? That's a good one. Um, let me see really quick if I can find... Pink Panther, and then we'll do the Clementi one. Um, let me see here, everybody. Like I said, Pink Panther I might have to dig for. Pink Panther. Let's see. Oh, that version is crazy. There's no way. I've seen an easier version of it before, though. Yeah, musicnotes.net. That's that's a paid thing. I try to get you free ones if I can. Yeah, these are all like behind uh, paywalls, a lot of these. Let me see this. Yeah, weird. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't feel good about this site. Some sites, they start throwing ads up in your face. And this one's weird too. So yeah, I don't, at least from the versions I've seen here, I don't. Recommend this one for what we're talking about tonight. It is neat, and I have seen an easier version. One of my students has it, actually. But that one's a little bit harder to find. Uh, the Clementi Sonatina, huh? I think you're right on that, because I have... I have seen it before. Let me see if I can look it up. And there's a bunch of them, so... Let's see. Yeah, you know what? These aren't bad. These are good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I know you're... Yep. All right, cool. So these aren't bad at all. Um, let me... The one thing I got to do... Sorry, guys. I know that I'm not sharing what I'm looking at with you, and you're probably wondering what's happening, but I promise that I am hard at work finding some good stuff for you. So what I need to do is, because I will forget this, is I'm going to link you to the Clementi and the Arabesque in the description right now. Because like I said, I will I will forget that. All right. Um, here 
Okay, here, and then the arabesque. Man, I don't, let's see, here we go. Okay, now we're cooking, now we're cooking with fire. So we'll be right back. There we go, perfect. Okay, so those are now in the description. You might have to refresh the page to find them, but let me get you a um, show you this one. And then probably what I'm going to do is I'll look at the other suggestions I'm getting. I may or may not show them on stream just because I feel like the lesson's getting long enough. I might do another one or two, though. So let's see. Okay, another suggestion we got was a collection of sonatinas by Clementi. And these are actually really good as well. Now, they're a little bit more complicated than some of the other ones I've been talking about because there's a little bit more going on uh, between each hand. But they're really scale patterns and um, it's in the key of C and there's not a whole lot of accidentals going on. Um, this first one you may have heard already, so let's try it out. play this one in a while. And then so forth. So there's the opening there for you. So I'd have to take a look at this one because it's been a while. But there's a huge collection of these um, that you can take a look at. And again, I've included that link there in the description. Okay, Ratty Fatty says, beginning church songs, which is a good one. Um, I'm not going to look that up now, only because of, um, those are hard to find, actually. We were looking for a good church hymnal one time, and it was just taking a long time. But yeah, if you could find some beginning church songs, those are good as well. Uh, my lesson for this week, Sonatina. All right, Bam and Molly. And welcome anybody else who is new. Make sure that you're subscribed. You have turned on all notifications because we have more fantastic lessons coming out all the time, and I don't want you to miss a beat. Uh, PI Man says, Tim, I like the background on the shelves. Thank you so much. I like it too. I really do. I think it turned out well. I had this idea in my head on how it might turn out, and um, it turned out good. And that I'm probably going to keep arranging it a little bit. Like I still need something down here. But uh, I'm still going to keep making it better and better. But uh, Rich says, Tim, have you learned any Undertale songs? Yes, indeed. Actually, you know what? You know what, Rich? Um, yeah, that's actually what I've been practicing the last few weeks. You know, not Bach or Chopin or anything. The classics, guys. The classics like Undertale, the original soundtrack. But you know what? This is actually a good a good one to get in here. Um, hopefully I remember to put the link in the description. You know, I'm going to give it to you in the chat right now because that takes less time. <clears throat> Undertale um, soundtrack. Now, this is on musescore.net or something like that. I forget what it is. Yeah, musescore.com. It might make you have to create an account, but it's totally worth it. You can find so many good pieces in here whether they're classical or something a little bit more modern okay let me do this okay one of our students mentioned undertale the the video game and the soundtrack that goes along with it and actually i'm going to make a lesson on this pretty soon it's actually scheduled on the schedule for our live streams but um this one is actually a pretty good choice for beginners there's a little bit more going on here but these songs these pieces i'm telling you are freaking awesome. In fact, I'm going to play like maybe the opening two here or just, you know, I'm not going to play too long because I want to make sure we get to more stuff. But um, let me, let's take a look here. So these are really cool because it starts out with this theme that repeats over and over again throughout the piece. And it starts out, the cool thing about this too is it starts out simple. It's kind of like the um, canon in D and it gets more and more complex as you go along. So it's really cool.
keeps going. Maybe we'll do another line here or so. And then they keep getting more and more complex as you go along. One of my favorites here is this fallen down uh, theme right here. I really like that one. See, and they're really short. That's the cool thing about it. So um, they're, they're, you really feel accomplished when you learn each of these ones. This one I'm still getting down, the Ruins one. Um, I know you can't quite see. It's kind of out of whack there up there. But um, this one's really neat too. Sorry. Let me try again. So that one's really cool. And then they get more and more complex. Like, let me find this one I've really been um, trying to get the hang of. Oh, you know what? It won't do it because it's on this. Um, let me do something really quick to see if I can find it. And then if I can't, we'll just have to save it for the Undertale lesson that I'm actually we're going to do. Or I'll talk more about this. But I've really been getting into this. Um, Big time. Here we go. Hold on. Why is it not working? It's not doing the find on page thing that I wanted to do. There we go. All right, cool. So we're back. So the one I really like is this um, bone trussle one, and um, it's pretty tricky but it's really fun. So maybe we'll play a line or two of that. I'm going to try it with the right notes. keeps going so like I said I'm still trying to get the hang of that one but really good collection of pieces here especially if you like Undertale okay Rich says songs sound great yes they are like I said they're really short they sound cool I really really like it um, so I recommend you guys check it out too, even if you've never played Undertale. Um, really, really good collection of pieces there, and really um, diverse. Like they do, they they vary in key signature, the style, the um, like the what is it called, like the the rhythm and everything, and so that makes it really cool. Thank you, Rich, for moderating for me. I'm not sure what happened, but that's great. Um, okay. I'm just gonna pretend, like, I didn't even know what he said, but that's fine. Um, okay, let's see here. Thanks, Tim. That is one of my favorite sonatinas. Thank you so much. Um, uh, you're very welcome. Uh, let's see here. Thanks, Tim. I saw that one. All right, and um, everybody, like I didn't get to mention everybody by name tonight, but we have so many people in attendance, which is just great. I really, really love it. So thank you very much. Nadia says no negativity. I don't mind negativity. Well, I do mind negativity. I don't mind constructive criticism, but I can tell this guy has been posting. So, you know, he, he's a little bit adamant about it. Uh, let's see here.
All right, remember to hit those like buttons, says the bird. Yeah, smash that like button. Oh yeah, we have to do the um, the quiz, guys. <laughs> so let's get it back here. And do the quiz. Because that's an important part of the lesson. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, quiz time. Everybody likes quizzes, right? You loved them in school, so now he got one here. But it's for a good purpose. It's to make sure that um, you've gotten everything that you need to get out of this lesson. Of course, to get the most out of this lesson, you need to play the pieces that I've given you. But let's take a look here and uh, with some questions that I have just for you. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Okay, if you can answer these questions, you understand the lesson. If you can't, you need to go back and see if you can pick out the information. So question one, what should you look for in a piece as a beginner? Should it be A, simplicity, B, fast finger patterns, or C, songs that sound cool? Now, you could argue that it could be a mixture of all three of these, but which one of those really sticks out to you? Question two. Beyond the notes of a piece, what are some things that you can add into the piece that make the piece sound so much better, make it come alive, make it um, into really, make it sound really, really musical and really good? All right, those were really the only two questions I had because it was more of a um, me showing you pieces that I recommend kind of thing. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Yeah, all right, great, great. Let me get here. Okay, what you need to do next is make sure you are subscribed and you turn on all those notifications because we have new lessons coming out Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, all the time, and you don't want to miss a beat. If you want to keep learning here on YouTube, make sure to check out this playlist right here for the number one skill that I recommend you learn on piano, sight reading, and I'll include something else here just for you. So thanks everybody for coming by. It's been your piano teacher, Tim, and I'm gonna see you in the next lesson. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, I'm still here. I do the, the ending there, so when I edit it together, it uh, makes sense. All right, I think everybody got the right answers here because everybody said A. Uh, simplicity, yeah, that is correct. All right, let me um, let me just. Oh yeah, there's. Um, before we go, I mean, we still have about 15 minutes left. I'm gonna read through, go back and read through some of the comments here to say hello to some people. But before we do that, let me kind of update you on what's happening with the channel and other announcements that I have. One announcement that I have is this one and then we'll get to the the calendar of what's going on and what you can expect here in the new year because we're doing things a little bit different but still familiar so let's do this all right so if you like my lessons over here on youtube you are going to love the courses i have over on my website piano lessons on the web.com i have over 20 courses designed to help you learn not just piano but also music theory, improvisation, sight reading, ear training, and anything else I felt you would need to be a well-rounded and good musician. These are great for beginners who need a solid foundation or those who have experience already and want to take their skills to that next level. So whether you've just found out about me or you've known about me for a while, there's something here for you for sure and um, you obviously you can contact me with any questions you have you can check out all the other um, all the other features there and what my courses will offer you when you sign up now the reason I'm really emphasizing this and I really wanted to make sure I get this in on this live stream is that the holiday sale which is a pretty long one it started before Christmas ends tomorrow the 14th um, by the end of the day. I may extend it by a day, but I'm not going to extend it very long because it's been a long sale already. So jump on it. Go to pianolessonsontheweb.com. Check it out. One thing, other thing I want to mention is you can get a great deal. You can um, 
Sign up for courses individually, or you can buy them in the course packs. So take a look at the beginner's pack here, which is on sale for $29.99. Normally the courses individually go for $29.99, so it's a fantastic deal. And you can obviously um, read the, the description of the beginner's pack, but what you can also do is click on each individual course, and it will take you into the course description for that course, see what it's going to cover, what you need to know ahead of time, what you're going to be able to do at the end of the course, how long in general it's going to take. Of course, that depends a lot on what type of learner you are. Um, and then piano pieces that you are going to learn during um, that course. Now, obviously, music theory, they have their own types of assignments, and it's not so much playing things. So you want to read through each course description to see what it covers. And of course, if you have any questions, you can just email me, tim at lessonsontheweb.com, and I'd be more than happy to help you out. One last thing I want to mention about this is that there's a satisfaction guarantee, 30 day money back, that if you um, are not satisfied for whatever reason, you just find it's not for you, um, then you know request a refund and I will um, be more than happy to uh, refund you 100%. You just need to email me at, uh, again, tim at lessonsontheweb.com. Okay, now, that I've shown you that, I want to get to the really good stuff. I mean, that is the good stuff, but uh, okay. So if you go on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, same website, and you click on the community tab up top, this is for the live stream. Um, so what you can do is one thing, the first thing I'll show you actually, is you scroll down and you see the calendar of what we're talking about. I usually do it like a month in advance. So we have until the end of January here booked. And then probably nah, probably tomorrow, actually, you'll probably start maybe seeing some of the February ones. Topics come up and see what we're going to be talking about. Um, we're, name, we're meeting next Friday. One of my goals for the new year was to become more, um, more consistent again with the live streams because we were doing them like every other week for a while and because um, I was kind of stressed out from moving. But I'm doing really good now. I'm feeling good. So we're going to get more consistent. We're going to do them every Friday, every Sunday, unless, you know, I absolutely can't make it. But I'm really going to make an effort to make each one. Uh, next Friday, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about the five things you should look for before you start slate reading a piece. This one's going to be really helpful. Some of these things you probably, you might be looking for. I mean, you probably know about them all but you might not be using this checklist before you sight read. And it's super important that you do this. I do this with all my students, even though after you know 20 weeks of lessons of me saying it, they, they roll their eyes, well, I don't know if they roll their eyes at me, but they you know they know them so well. And that's really important with music is to know things like the back of your hand. Uh, Sunday, we have a similar lesson to what we did today. It's classical pieces that are great for beginners, but these are like classical, right? So I'm not going to be talking about Undertale. I'm not going to be talking about, um, you know, any anything else. Um, and the great thing about this lesson is I made careful choices as to pick pieces that I haven't talked about before on the channel. So, you know, you know the ones that we've always, always talked about. Uh, Prelude in C by Bach. For Elise by Beethoven. Now you might see those in there, or one of those in there, but you're going to see a lot of things I haven't shown you yet, which is going to be great. Um, and then, oh, um, Friday is the student showcase, two weeks from now. I really need to get on making the announcement video for this and getting out it out on the social media. So I'm going to tell you now, if you're watching this in the live stream, what, you, what I need you to do, now what this is all about, the student showcase, is it's a new series that we're going to do that's where which involves you sending me recordings of yourself playing and what i'm going to do is i'm going to review them on the channel and critique them you know i'm going to be nice i'm going to give you maybe um one or two things that i like or you know as many as i want and then i'm going to give you a list of maybe two to five things that i think you can improve upon now what you need um, to consider i guess is um, you don't have to show your face. So if you're like, oh, I don't really feel like putting myself out there, don't worry about it. You can just show your hands if you want. You can show your face if you want, but show your hands. Um, give me some kind of name or moniker, like made up name um, to go with your piece so we, I can introduce you as something. You know, you can either use your screen name or your real name. 
uh, and then send me those to, through my email, tim at lessonsontheweb.com is a, like an attachment or a link. You, know, you can post them to YouTube and then link me there. That works. I know some of you do have YouTubes already. And um, what else? Oh, you can send them to me through facebook.com slash lessons on the web. Just send me a message, a private message there, and I'd be more than happy to accept your submission there. So those are two of probably the best places. And then when I post the announcement video, you can probably post a link in the comments there if you want. Um, but the email and the Facebook private message are more of a private avenue if you don't really want anybody else to see um, your video. Um, yeah, that's what it's going to be. And then what we're going to do is at the end of each month, there's going to be the student showcase where during the live stream, I'm going to just go down a list of all the submissions I got, and I'm going to give you some recommendations. It's going to be a bit different than what we usually do. I think even if you're not interested in submitting a submission or you don't feel comfortable, you're going to get something out of this by just watching me critique something, somebody else. Like you're, you're used to watching me critique myself basically here on camera and, and teach you uh, that way. So it's going to be something really cool. It's going to be like um, just something a little different. And I think you're all going to enjoy it. I think I'm going to enjoy doing it as well. I like to change things up and try different things. So be on the lookout for that, but you can submit your submissions to me now. Um, that isn't a problem. And they can't, they don't have to be recordings you've made now and songs that you're working on now. If you have recordings of things you've played in the past, like I know Rich has a YouTube channel and a lot of you do, um, you can send me a link to those and I'd be more than happy to give you um, some feedback on those playthroughs as well. Yeah, Rich, so the Student Showcase works is you send me a link to uh, through email or Facebook and um, just let me know what piece you want me to review. If you, if you, like, say you want me to review one on your YouTube channel, just send me the link of the one you want. We should have a group chat on Messenger and then Tim could reach us via video chat. Um, are you talking about Facebook Messenger? Uh, Mark, let me know. Jeremy says, or a link to their videos. Okay. Yep. So that how, uh, that's how it works. <laughs> uh, Real Wednesday fan says, Tim, one more thing. Say, subscribe to PewDiePie. Join the revolution and beat T-Series. So if you guys don't know what that is, uh, PewDiePie, real quick, is the number one YouTube, uh, subscribe YouTube channel. You probably do know that, or maybe you don't. And T-Series, which is like an Indian company that makes Bollywood movies, is about to catch up. But every time they're about to catch up, Pew PewDiePie pulls ahead because everybody says subscribe to PewDiePie. Um, so that's why he's saying that. And I love PewDiePie. Um, I think he's one of the people that I've ever seen get at the top of anything that I believe deserves to be there. Uh, all right. I'm sure he is, Tim. Or a link to their video. Okay. I'm trying to think. Um, any questions about what we talked about tonight, guys? Let me get the chat back in here. I didn't, didn't realize I didn't have it. You know this channel is awesome when you reach 81,000 subscriptions, growing so fast. Thank you so much, Adria. We are growing like way faster than ever. Um, we're growing, now I don't like talking about this too much because I don't like being like, oh, views and all that. Although views are important, views and subscribers are important for this one thing. And that's because behind a view, behind a subscriber is a piano student. And that's why it does matter to me and uh, why I do try to get more views and subscribers um, but we're growing at about um, like a hundred between 100 and 150 subscribers a day and last year we were only growing by maybe 30 to 40 subscribers a day so there's quite a leap there and actually the last couple weeks after the holiday things have started to really pick up so I'm really starting to figure things out and um, get those videos out to more 
more students, which is amazing. I love it. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? Glad to have you with us. I'm having a hard time doing the pedal on um, Nacien. Being very uncoordinated. You know, I need to plug my pedal in. I took it out for some reason, but I need to get it back. So, um, yeah, that, you know, pedal, well, you know what's weird? Pedal for me has always been really second nature, and I barely ever have to think about it. I know a lot of people that struggle with it. Now, one simple piece of advice I can do, um, tell you, is just keep working on it. You know, keep trying. The more you work with the pedal, the better you're going to get at it. You might want to try something a little bit easier um, first and then work your way up to that piece. All right, Tim, what is the deadline for these submissions? Um, I do not have anything ready, which is fine. Have always been very timid. There is fan, and this is by Fanny, by the way. There is no uh, time limit for these submissions. So what's going to happen is if um, whatever month you send them to me, I will review them at the end of that month. Now, if you send them to me like a day before the live stream is supposed to go live, I might, and I'll let you know. I might push it back to the next month, but we're going to do this every month for as long as, as long as I feel like. I'll let you know if we ever stop it. So there's no um, no time limit. If you want to get ready in a few months and send them to me in April to do at the end of April, we can do that. End of June, we can do that. Um, I feel like I want to do this all year and see how it goes. Jigglywig says, okay. Yeah, just keep working on it. Some people, it's, it's second nature, and some people you got to keep... Keep at it. Okay. Ba -ba. Everybody, uh, before we go, I just want to say thank you so much for coming tonight. I saw Carol Christensen's back. I saw you say something in the beginning there that you're back from somewhere. I forget what you said, but I'm so happy to have you back. Carol's been with us for a long time. Um, same with Rich. Rich has been with us for a really long time, which is amazing. Um, Adria, same thing, Nadia. So we have a lot of returning students, which is really cool to me. Uh, make sure to smash subscribe. If you are, or smash the like button on this video, rather. There's so many things to smash these days. Uh, go to pianolessonsontheweb.com if you're interested in taking advantage of that sale I was talking about with you. And look forward to more lessons in the coming week. Oh, Tuesday Tips back. Tuesday Tip, which um, if you don't know what Tuesday Tip is, it's a video I put out every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So any anytime you check, want to check it out on Tuesday, it works great. And what it is, is it's a shorter video where it's one singular tip that I want to give you that you need to apply to your piano practice all week. This one is about reading sheet music and a great tip I have on that. So check, be on the lookout for that. Check that out. And we'll go from there. Um, just looking for like, uh, Tim, what do you do to inspire yourself to play again when you're in a rut, says Rich. Um, I play things that I like, to be honest. Like Undertale, for instance. I was in a rut for so long. Um, I don't want to get into it again, but like uh, the year, the bad year I had, 2017, where so many people died um, in my family. Uh I was like in such a rut. I didn't want to play anymore. I didn't want to practice anymore. I was kind of even burned out on the channel a little bit, even though I still, I still like doing it. I was just like, life had just beaten me so bad. And, um, and, and then moving in the house and there was like a lot of things going and going into that and, and buying the house and everything, um, just because I was, I was so busy. So I kind of had fallen out of practice for a long time. Like I'd practice a little bit here and there, but I never practiced for my own enjoyment and I think um, one thing that's gotten me back into practicing, now I'm working my way up to the, you know, two out three hours a day I really should be getting. I'm probably at an hour a day now um, back again, is practicing things I want to do. Like the Undertale soundtrack. It's something I really wanted to play, and so it's really gotten me into it. I actually think about going onto the piano again and playing it. So think about things you like. I know you like Final Fantasy or, you know, just really anything in general. Um, don't 
always necessarily feel like you have to work on all the same stuff you've been working on. Try something new. Um, sometimes that can really help you out as well. Laredo's here too. Have I been missed? L Laredo, you have been missed. I really, really um, did miss you. Uh, have you ever tried playing a pipe organ? No, but I would love it by Matt Cook. I would love doing that. I've always wanted to play the organ. Yeah, also, if you want me to link to your videos during the student showcase, I can do that as well. But if you don't, totally fine. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. Laredo, are you going to do this showcase? I hope everybody does the showcase if you can. That'd be I would take submissions from anybody, but yeah, hopefully Laredo's in. Oh, it's so good to be back and joining all of you. You are family. Thank you so much, Laredo. I really appreciate that. And I feel the same way about all you guys. Good lesson, Tim. Thanks, says Piano Man. You're very welcome. Thanks, Tim, says Nadia. Terry, you're very welcome. Adria, LOL, I forget. Oh, and don't break the like button. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Tim, I got a metronome finally, says the bird. Ex uh, very, very cool. I very, almost want to say cool and good at the same time. as say could. Very good. Actually, you know what? I have a metronome in the middle square there, Hollywood Squares. And um, it's more of a mechanical one. I'll have to show you guys that sometimes because I've only shown you the digital ones. Um, that one's a little different. The story I have behind, it's not that specific one, but um, the only time I've ever played the mechanical metronome was when I went in for my very first, what they call juries. If they couldn't make the, the sound of what it is any more intimidating, they call it juries like, because you're being judged by all the music professors in the school. But when I went to j music school and did my first juries, which is a great name, um, they had they had one of these on the um, piano, and Dr. Valletta, who was the oldest member there, he said, "Turn, you know, turn on. You don't really turn it on, but he's like, uh, set the metronome to this speed and play the sight reading example." And I didn't even know how it worked. I was like, "Well, what do you even do with this thing?" Because I always had the electronic ones. And he he laughed at me. Oh, ho, ho, ho. so funny. Need tips on intro for my sheets, but do not give me one, says Bernadine. Okay, so you don't want a tip? I'm confused, Bernadine. Uh, Kevin Z says, ye. All right, everybody. Um, how do you turn pages, Tim? I tried it with paper clips, but one flew off when I flipped the page. You know what? The, the best, that's a good question. The best thing for turning pages, I'm still working out on a digital way to do this, like where I have things in front of me. I, I had this put foot pedal that did it, and I didn't like it. But anyway, in terms of like printing out pages, you want to print out the pages individually. You don't really want them stapled if you want to play from beginning to end on the piece. What you need to do is you need to lay as many sheets on the stand as possible. However, you can really – most stands are only large enough to fit three or so, maybe four. So what you need to do is you need to find some way to extend the the stand to be wider. You can use cardboard. If you take a cardboard box and you take the part where it bends and you cut it the right way, you can actually place it on your stand. You might have to tape it too, and it'll stick it out more. It'll be like a, an extension of the stand, like it's that L shape. You know, you want a piece of cardboard in an L shape. And that will extend it out as long as you need. What you can also do is you can tape the pages together horizontally like that so that when you set it on the stand, the, the middle pages are on the stand and the other pages are off. But Kevin, what's going on with you, bud? Um, but the other pages are off. The only problem with that is they might flop down. So I always have been a real... Um, believer in the cardboard technique. Hey, it's me again. Says the real Isaac. What up, the real Isaac? Uh, hey, it's me again. But question: When reading sheet music, do I try to read it? Yes. Or practice each clef slowly? 
you want to, when you're first starting out, practice each clef slowly and then try putting them together slower. Lorea says, I'm not, uh, I'm not ready for the showcase. That's okay. Like I said, I want to do this all year long, see how it goes. And uh, if you're ready six months from now, totally cool. If you never submit anything, that's totally cool. Because I think even if you don't submit anything, you're going to get something out of it. In fact, I know so. All right, everybody. Um, I'm going to bid you adieu for tonight. It is at the hour. Uh, thank you for coming by. I had a terrific time teaching you all again today. I'm excited with new energy here in the new year. Excited with um, the new things that are going to be coming out. I'm going to be experimenting with more and more things and um they're gonna be gonna be great guys so um thanks for coming by it's been your piano teacher tim here from you know where piano lessons on the web thank you so much for coming by and i'm gonna see you yes you in that next lesson thank you so much all right have a great night everybody you're you are quite welcome